In this lesson, I'll show you how to perform the ANOVA test when you're only given the mean in standard deviation. The question reads, a researcher studying genetic influences on learning compares the maze performance of four genetically different strains of mice using eight mice per strain. Performance for the four strains were as follows. Notice that we've been given the mean and standard deviation in those two columns. Using the 0.1 significance level, is there an overall difference in maze performance among the four strains? As you can tell, the difference between this question and in question number one was that in question one, we were given the data for each group. In this case, we're not given that data, but instead we're given the mean and standard deviation. We'll be using the same steps as before, starting with creating a hypothesis. And just as before, the null hypothesis will be as if nothing happened where all four groups performed equally. I'll call this group one, two, three, and four, just for reference sake, so that I can write down mu one is equal to mu two, and they're all the same. Remember, we use the Greek letter mu when referencing the entire population's mean. The alternative hypothesis, HA, is that at least one group differed. Let me write that down. The next step in the process that we learned in question number one was to pick a test, and we'll be using the F test. Therefore, we need to find out what F observed is, and that can be found by taking the mean square value for between the groups and dividing it by the mean square value of within. And we denote that using S squared B over S squared W. And in case you're curious, that's this part of the ANOVA table which we'll construct in step three. We need to construct this table and we start off by finding the sum of squares for between. Just as before, to do that, we need to take the average of the averages. And in case you're confused, these are the formulas that we used in the past, although we won't be able to use these formulas exactly the way they are because we're not given the data here, we're only given the mean and the standard deviation. But this part holds true where we start by finding the average of the averages. We're told that the averages for each of these strains are right here. We'll add those up and divide by four. So I have 41 plus 38 plus 14 plus 37, divide that by four, and we end up with 32.5. So I'll write down x bar dot dot is 32.5. What we do with this value, according to this formula, is we take 32.5 and subtract it from each of these values. 32.5, 32.5, and so on. Once you've subtracted each of these values by 32.5, you then multiply it by the number of individuals in each group. And we were told that it is eight. So we multiply this by eight. And we also square whatever's inside the parentheses. So we square the difference for each and add them all up. You can use your calculator here. So eight bracket 41 minus 32.5 raised to the power of two. And the rest should look like this. I end up getting 3,720. I'll write that down right here, 3,720. Next, we'll find the sum of squares for within and unlike before, we cannot use this formula because we don't have the individual data for each group. Instead, you use the following formula where you take the standard deviation, you square it. So you get the variance. By squaring the standard deviation, you get what we call the variance. Then you multiply each of these values by the number of individuals in each strain, which was eight minus one. And you add them up like this. So technically you're taking 3.5 raised to the power of two times seven plus each of these. Let me show you how to put that into your calculator. 3.5 raised to the power of two times seven plus 4.6 raised to the power of two times seven and the rest should give you the following answer. I end up with 503.02. 503 5.03.02. Adding these two values up, so the number on our screen plus 3720, we get 4,223 decimal 02. Now the easy part, the degrees of freedom. 
let's look at the formula. We have k minus 1 for that first one. k represents the number of groups. We have four strains, so 4 minus 1 is 3. Big N represents the total number of individuals. We have 32, because 8 times 4 is 32. Minus k, that's 4. And that gives us 28. Adding these up, we get 31. Finally, the most important part is the mean squares for the between and within, because we'll need that for the F observed. The formulas for those are shown here. We'll take S as B, so the sum of squares for between, and divide it by K minus 1, or divide it by the degrees of freedom. 3, 7, 2, 0, divided by 3. And for this one, we take 5, 0, 3, decimal 0, 2, and divide it by 28. Let's do it all in one step. For the top part here, we'll have 3, 7, 2, 0, divided by 3. So that takes care of this one. And then we'll divide that by 503.02 divided by 28. And we get our F observed to be 69.02, 69.02. In step number four, we have to compare this to F critical and make a decision, a decision whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis. So how do we find the F critical? What is that? Well, we'll need a table and the table is specific for an alpha value of 0 0.01, a degrees of freedom between that is 3, and a degrees of freedom within that is 28. Let's find that table. So the table should look something like this. We have 3 up here, and 28 extends all the way down here. It's 4.57. So this value is 4.57. The F distribution has the following graph. And F critical is 4.57. Let's say over here. Because the value 69.02 is well beyond 4.57, let's say somewhere down here at this end of the distribution, it falls in what we call the rejection region. This means that we have to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis being that they're all the same. And we reject it in favor of the alternative. The final step is to conclude. We have sufficient evidence to say that at least one of these groups differed at 0 0.01 significance. And there you have it. That is how to perform the ANOVA test when you're given only the mean and standard deviation.